you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Usually when I speak, I talk about bags. Messenger bags, the functionality, the durability. I talk about the early days, 1993. Two students had an idea and the need. They wanted to have a messenger bag. Couldn't get one, so they made one themselves. I talk about the early days in the flat of our roommate where the bus tube became uh, the place to wash our trucking tarps, where the bedroom became our first sweatshop. Then usually I talk about the freeways, where all our materials come from, about Switzerland, which is a transit country, where all the trucks from Hamburg, from Palermo, pass right through. But today, I will not talk about trucks. I will not talk about the beautiful transit graphics. It seems to be like an untouched world in design, where the logos and brands look bold and beautiful, and the colors follow the rules of the freeway. I will not talk about truckers, the rough logistics world. And I will not talk about the 500 tons of truck tarpaulins which we collect every year and process. To imagine 500 tons of truck tarps, that would be a traffic jam of 100 kilometers. So I don't talk about this tough job to cut those monster trucks down into pieces you can handle. I will not talk about the washing process, how you get off the dirt of 10 years from the freeway, how we try to make the washing process as ecological as possible. We collect all the rainwater from our factory. We, use, uh, the, um, we take back the heat from the, from the washing process. We try to uh, dry it as, as ecological as possible. So I will not talk about the difficult color mix because it's the freeway which is dictating us the colors of the next year. I will not talk about the individual cutting process where every bag is cut by hand to make it unique. And I think it's this individuality which made Freitag a successful company, which made us from a student project becoming a small, still small Swiss company with 150 employees with a worldwide recognition, as you mentioned. And I think that's probably the individuality which was the key success factor. So today, I will talk about something else. I try to talk about our agile approach. But what means agile to Freitag? I don't talk about, or I don't mean the early days when we have been young, beautiful, and agile, uh, able to uh, jump on the table and cut uh, hundreds of bags ourselves. So it's not this ag agility which I, I want to talk about. But Maybe, maybe yes, I want to talk about that, because I think in the pioneer phase, you're incredibly um, agile. You are highly motivated. You have people which are all-rounders. They are skilled. They are um, open to a change. And I think in this pioneer phase, there's just natural agility. And then I think we heard in, in other speeches before, there comes a phase when differentiation takes place. You need to be more professional. You need to have specialized people. You start to build departments. And soon, all those parts start to be difficult to manage. And with all these entities, it's difficult to bring a holistic approach to the company. We're still small, but still we have departments and, and we face already problems. Maybe IBM, we heard it before, um, had on a much bigger scale. But still, even um, when you come from the too hot phase into the um, just right phase, you start to build up those structures. So what you need then is, in the words of the speech before, pots. You need integration and you need this agile approach. Of course, if you know about that, if you have all those knowledge and you have it now after those speeches, you can directly go into the pod organization. You don't need to run into this differentiation. But still, um, at Freitag, I think I don't want to tell you how to do that. I just can tell you a little bit what we experienced on our way to become a little bit more agile. Let me tell what we went through. 
um, Scrum. That was my first approach, learning about agility. And um, actually, I prefer the German word, which is Resultatoptimierungsmodell. <laughs> Pretty awkward, but it kind of describes what it is. <laughs> and optimizing the results. And let me ask you, who is familiar with Scrum techniques? Please raise your hands. All right, everybody is familiar with that. But it's not finished. Who worked in a Scrum project? Raise your hands. All right, many more. Who of you who have raised the hands is not from the IT or new media? Great. <laughs> I see somebody. Um, no, that's the point. I think um, it's not exactly the technique which you think of first when you are producing bags. And I was fascinated by this technique. I, I, of course, when you watch on YouTube, you mostly see videos from uh, IT companies and how they run that. I was fascinated, and I suddenly ran out and started to produce those Kanban boards and, and uh, used a lot of post-its to describe what I wanted to do in the design department. The only problem was I was the only one doing it. So I started to uh, run around with these Scrum presentations, trying to explain what um, a Scrum organization is, what a Scrum master does, what the product owner should do, how a backlog is aggregated, how you uh, manage a sprint, um, how you uh, deal with a, with a burn down chart and things like that. And I think it helped, so people started to understand what I wanted to do. Um, I, they, they started to understand what agile approach could mean to Freitag. And um, of course, you know it all better. You are familiar with that technique. Just uh, one thing, you always need to adapt it to the culture of your company, because every company is different, and sometimes you also need wordings. So for example, the uh, product owner didn't work for us, because for us, products are bags and, and not kind of projects. That's why we changed that. And another thing we changed is that um, this moment when you run from one um, sprint cycle to the next one, um, this moment, we usually it's called in, in Scrum projects called review, but we changed that word and we, we said this is the death valley. So um, it's actually it's a little bit more dramatic and it shows that you really need to go through that valley and you might start all over again. It just kind of uh, shows a little bit better. So that's why we after sprints we usually go through this valley of death. Um, after my first experience with Scrum and trying to establish this technique in Freitag, um, we had another challenge. We uh, had beautiful factory right in the middle of Zurich, the Mark Areal. It was a beautiful old factory from the 1920s. But um, centrification was eating up that place. Now the Mark Areal is a prime site, and there is a prime tower, and it's the highest building of Switzerland. So need, we needed to move out, out of the Mark Areal, and we found a new place. Um, it was in early con, and we had the chance that a new building was built for us, but also for other companies from the creative industries. Um, the chance that I want to talk about is not the building itself, but it was the moment to move and also to rethink the way we want to work, the way we want to store things, the way we want to work and sit on tables and what sort of tools we need, um, the way we think about waste. Actually, we try to eliminate this word waste. We just try to think of a resource in the wrong place. And we also were thinking about collaboration about how can we um, communicate those shared values, how can we show and be more transparent to each other that the team um, can have a better collaboration in an Agile project. We somehow succeeded, and um, funny enough, I have the feeling um, to really become creative, you need room in time, for example, a sprint cycle, three weeks, trying to be creative in that time, but you also need to have room in space. And it might seem a bit trivial, but somehow bolts in a wall can make a change to an agile team. Um, we have, in all our company, we have bolts. In every room, we have bolts. And you can help hang up those, those uh, pin boards. In our case, they are magnetic. They, uh, you can use them for post-its or as whiteboards. Or in our case, it's green. Uh, it's green, so we call them green boards. Uh, they are extremely agile. You can move them around. Um, and you can bring them to your desk and really have uh, a great tool to um, be more agile. But um, it just brought me to this um, thought that I think architecture 
um, has to be seen as the embodiment of an agile organization. And I think it really can make a change. So, um, yeah, I was thinking when, when I heard the speech before and this little gray box where you come up with this um, uh, new ta table that you do. I think, yeah, of course, um, probably it works quite well to, to think in that box, but sometimes you need to uh, leave that box again. And I think, really, think of, think of the architecture you work in and, and think of if this could enable something which uh, any um, IT tool could do for you. As I mentioned, Freitag is not just about innovations and being agile and trying to innovate. To be honest, we are pretty conservative. Since 20 years, we sell the same product with the same material, with the same concept. Um, there we have a scale of economy, we produce, and the, the bags, they look like the, the first archetype which is stored in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And so Freitag is not just about innovation and projects. We also have to deal with this operative business. And I think this is the real challenge. How do you integrate? You need the pot thinking at one hand, and at the other hand, you have people which are not so familiar to work within these environments. And that's why we made two major changes in our organization. Um, one was that we really added to the linear functions, the project organizations, which, where people jump into new roles. So in the project, you have a different, a different perspective than you have in your daily linear um, job. And the second thing, which is still very young, is um, a technique which is called beyond budgeting. Um, it's a very young move for us. We just eliminated from the 1st of January our budget. There is no financial budget, um, again, for Freitag. And I think it's, it's a good thing because this, this yearly budget planning is really um, contraproductive for agility. How, how could that work? You think in autumn about all the projects you want to do next year, and then you put them into a financial plan. But already in February, it's not true again, and you start to move the budget from that project to another one because you still have budget. And this whole, it's, it's time consuming. It's just, it's just against um, the, the, agile, the agile world. And that's why um, it would take, <laughs> It's very young for us, and it would take another 20 minutes to explain how it works, but you can figure it out. That's a lot of web pages about that, and we try it out. And I'm very happy because then agility is also supported from the top down, from the financial world as well. Because often you're in agile teams, and you really have, you, on one hand, you hear like, be agile, be flexible, be adaptive. And at the other hand, um, you say like, stick to the plan, um, we have uh, to reach the numbers, and so on. I think um, beyond budgeting is a great way to uh, have one culture and one thinking in the company. Um, another thing is the shared values. We heard that before. Um, I think we, at Freitag, we, um, sorry, I was pressing the wrong button. Um, at Freitag, I think we had a good base because we really have shared values, even without writing them on a wall. But um, with the growing, and now we are 150 people, we have employees which live in Tokyo and in New York and in, in uh, Paris. And so I think it starts to be an issue. How can we keep those values? How can we share them within the team? Um, and that's why we uh, hand out these little notebooks to every new employee. Um, it has a meaningful title. The, the, the whole uh, booklet is called What the F, How and Why. Um, and it's, it's one of those tools, similar to this, this culture map that, that uh, you saw in the speech before. Um, it's somehow our um, culture map. It talks about the values that we share. Um, it's the, bland, the brand platform in it. Um, it's just um, a, a livingly inspirational work. It's not this heavyweight manifest or something. It's, just, it's a little book with uh, about uh, 40 pages, and you can just flip through and say, like, okay, what's important to us? What, what, what do we try to reach in every project, in every aspect? Um, yeah, it's just little, little inspirational pieces. And I think um, it works quite well for us to... Um, first have contact with every and each employee. So if somebody starts at Freitag, we uh, take time to everybody and explain what's important to us. Another thing I would recommend, I just learned it recently, don't plan. Um, to be more correct, speculate. Um, because I think a plan tries 
to suggest that you are right and the speculation might be wrong. And I think it's just much better to speculate um, than having plans. And of course, we have tools. Uh, not everything is analog at Freitag. We even have software and cloud software, and we try to use it in the best way to manage all our projects. But sometimes I have a problem. I don't see things. I hate going through long lists of, of projects. And uh, believe me, there is a lot of projects at Freitag. Um, it's, uh, you start to put them in folders uh, to get an overview, but then uh, we started to take different colors for different projects, and suddenly I started to see something. To have a Kanban board within a project is great, um, but how do you get an overview about all the projects? Um, we call this the Scrum of Scrums. And here, for example, I see, okay, um, red is really, really... Um, there we need to have some speed in it. Uh, blue is on hold, green is visionary, holistic, and the white ones should be on track. Um, it just helped me, and that's what, what you see is, um, don't tell me, show me. And I think this was just the color there, helped me somehow to see something. And I think it goes further. I think, really, start drawing, draw pictures. And, and I really, um, I, I love to draw on post-its. Um, a wall with drawings, I just have an incredible amount of information at one site and I don't need to read. And, and I, really, I really would say, like, go ahead and draw. Draw on post-its, of course, you need a lot of them, um, and I really um, could recommend that. I also love my pencil. It's, uh, I always have it with me. When, when, I, when I don't have it with me, I really get, get nervous. It's like, okay, where's my pencil? Um, because it's this Japanese brush, and it has this, this uh, very, very specific um, line that you can draw on them. I, I believe that you could lead a company with a pen and post-its. I think I can say everything I need to um, to my company with those two tools. It makes very fine lines, very silent lines. It also makes, at the same time, very loud lines, very clear lines. And somehow, I believe that small visions can grow big. Thank you very much. <laughs>